What's up everyone, welcome back to another episode of AWS Tutorial and today I'm going to talk about lambda layers and how to use that in lambda functions. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to use Python for the demo, but it works the same for all other languages as well. And in today's demo, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step instruction on how to create a deployment package using the virtual environment and how to upload that into lambda layers. And then I'm going to create a lambda function to use them. But before we get into the implementation part of it, let's talk about why we want to use lambda layers. Well, in my opinion, I think it has three advantages over just traditional Lambda function packages. The first one is that it makes your deployment package more organized. Because if you don't use Lambda layers, your deployment package is going to look like this, where you have your Lambda code, the business logic, and then you have all the libraries in the same folder where you just zip up everything and upload that. And obviously, this is not the greatest way to organize your project. And after you make changes to your Lambda function code, you have to zip up everything again and upload the entire thing again. So that's not convenient. And reason number two for using Lambda layers is that it allows your Lambda functions to have inline editing. Because as we all know that whenever your deployment package is over three megabytes, you're not going to have inline editing anymore. So if your package is too big, you're going to have something that looks like this. It's telling you that your deployment package is too big. You're not going to be able to add your code in line. So this is no good because you're not able to test your business logics in the Lambda function in a more immediate way. You would have to make changes in your, your Lambda code in the in your local machine and then zip up everything, upload it. And if something goes wrong, you have to do the same thing again. So we obviously don't want this. We want it to be able to allow us to add the code in line just like this. So if you have all your libraries as Lambda layers and then just have business logic code as your Lambda function code here, so you can edit it right here and test it right away. And then finally, reason number three is that it enables the library sharing capability between different Lambda functions. Because if you don't use Lambda layers, you have to zip up all your libraries in each of the individual Lambdas and upload them even though there may be common libraries between the two functions. Just like this, you have two individual Lambda functions and they have their business logics in each of them. And then they, even though they use the same libraries, you have to package them in each of the individual ones. You cannot share them. But if you use Lambda layers, you can extract the libraries out into uh, one layer and then it can be shared by the two Lambda functions. So it's a lot more convenient this way. All right, so right now we learned about the advantages of Lambda layers. Let's build one together. All right, so before we get into the implementation part of it, I want to correct something that I said in the intro. I said that we're going to use the virtual environment to create a deployment package for the Lambda layers. But then after I play around with it a little bit, I noticed that sometimes the importing of the libraries doesn't work. And that's because when we use the virtual environment on our Mac, it's installing the libraries based on the Mac OS operating system. But on the other hand, Lambda functions uses Linux operating system. The two operating systems are inherently different. So the libraries installations on the Mac OS may not work when we upload that to a Linux OS. So that's what is causing the problem. So instead of just using the virtual environment in our MacBook, what we're going to use is we're going to use Docker to create our libraries. And then we're going to use that for our Lambda layers. So if you don't have Docker installed in your machine, you can just go to the website and then based on your operating system, you can choose whichever the installed and then make sure that you have that running. Um, you just see your Docker logo running on your toolbar right here. So since I already have Docker installed and I have it up and running, I don't need to install it again. So what I'm going to do here now is I have VS Code opened up an empty folder called Tutorial. And we're going to need to create a few files for installation, for the library installation. The first thing is Docker file. And that's what we're going to use to create our image. I already have this written down before, so I'm going to copy and paste it here, but I'm going to explain what it is. So the first line here is we're going to use the Amazon Linux image. Uh, for our base image and then we're going to install other things on top of that and at the time of recording this is the latest version and then right here what it does is it's updating yam and then it uses yam to install python 3.8 
and then installed pip defo zip because we need zip to create our deployment package as a zip file and then after installation it just cleans up all the downloads and then next we use python 3 uh, to install pip and at the time of recording this is the latest version for pip and then we're going to use pip to create a virtual environment um, so technically we're still using a virtual environment but it's inside the docker container okay so this is our docker image or docker file that we're going to use to create an image and then the next file that we're going to create is our requirements doc text file and this is just a file for us to specify what library we want to install and what version of the library that we, we want to uh, specify and for this tutorial we're going to use two libraries or we're going to create two lambda layers and each of them has one library installed in them the first one is pandas and i think that's like one of the most popular lambda libraries and then the other one is requests and we're going to use that to do https requests so let's do uh, panda first and i think at the time of recording 1.4.2 is the latest version um, and then next what we're going to do is we're going to create a file called docker install dot shell file which is a shell script and this is actually the file that is going to run inside our docker container after we spin it up to install all the all the packages that we specify in our requirements dot text file and i also have this written down so i'm going to copy and paste it so what it does here is it uses the virtual environment library uh, that we installed earlier to create a virtual environment called Python here. So for installing the packages, you don't you don't or to create a virtual environment, you don't have to name it Python. Um, but for Lambda layers, at least at the time of recording, it only allows you to name it in this way: Python lib, Python something, and then side packages. Otherwise, it's not going to work. I tried uh, different names of it, but Python is the only name that I gave that uh, that worked for me. So I'm just going to name the virtual environment uh, as Python here so that I can just zip it up later on. And then next, what it does here is just activate the virtual environment after we installed it or create it. And then inside the virtual environment, we use pip to install whatever we specify in the requirements doc text file, which is pandas for now. And then we're going to install that in this location. Like I said, the path has to be this for the Lambda layers to work. And then lastly, we are going to zip up everything that's inside the uh, the Python folder. And we're just going to call it python.zip. And again, I think this has to be python.zip for the Lambda layers to work. So just name it that way. And then lastly, we're going to have a runner script to tie up everything. Um, so I'm just going to call it runner.show. So this is the entry point of the uh, the whole process. Um, this is actually the script that creates the Docker container and then uh, copy these files inside the container and then run these files and stuff to install everything. And I also have this written down, so I'm going to copy and paste it. All right, so the first thing we are doing here is we define the container variable. We just call it Lambda Docker container or Lambda Docker. And then we're going to name our image that we're going to use the docker file to build uh, we just call it lambda builder image but you can call it whatever you want and then we're going to start the docker container that's going to be called lambda docker because it uses the name and use the docker file to build the image called aws lambda builder image and then next it copies the requirements doc text file into our container and then what it does here is it's executing the docker install shell file inside the docker container and then after that is done it's copying the python.zip file that's inside the docker container and then uh, paste that outside of the docker container in our local machine which is in this folder as you remember here we zip up everything and call it python.zip and what we're doing here is we are copying that folder and place that in our root directory outside and here we're just stopping the container and then remove it okay so this is pretty much it and now we are ready to run this run it shell file to create our uh, deployment package so i'm going to do terminal new terminal uh, one more thing we need to do before we can run this file is to give it permission to run to execute things uh, so we're going to do a chmod 
think 744 is enough. And now I think we can do that. And it started executing. Okay, so this is done. And as you can see that it creates a python.zip file here. And that is our uh, deployment package for one of the Lambda layers. But before we move on to create another deployment package for the request library, let's move that to a separate folder first. Uh, because if we just change that to request and then uh, run this again, it's going to overwrite this, which is not what we want. So I'm going to navigate to that li uh, to that folder. It's going to create a new folder called pandas and then move the zip file inside. And now we can change that to be requests. And we're going to do 2.27.1 because I think that's the latest version. And then we're going to do the run again. Okay, so that is done as well. And it creates a new python.zip file here. Um, let's move that to a separate folder as well just so that we can distinguish them. Requests. And move it inside. Okay, so right now we have the two deployment packages ready for the two Lambda layers. Uh, now let's go ahead and, and go to the AWS console and create a Lambda layers to use. Okay, so right now I'm on the home page of the AWS console. Let's navigate to the Lambda page and get started. And we're going to go to Layers, Create Layer. Um, for the first one, we're going we're gonna to create a layer for the Panda library. So I'm just going to call it my Pandas layer. And then upload a zip folder, a zip file. So I'm going to navigate to the tutorial folder where we have our deployment packages created. So we're going to upload the pandas here. And then runtime, I think we use 3.8. And then hit create. Okay, so it's done. Let's go back to layers. Hit refresh, it's there. And now let's create one for the requests library. Do the same thing here. Upload the request deployment package. Okay, so that is done too. And we have both of them as version one here. And now I think we are ready to create a Lambda function and use them. Create a function. Uh, I'm just gonna call it my Lambda layer demo. And obviously we're gonna choose Python 3.8. And I'm just gonna let it create a new row for me because this is nothing special. Uh, the basic row should do it. And then hit create. Okay, so the Lambda creation is done. And the first thing we need to do is we need to add the two layers that we just created to this Lambda function. So I'm going to hit add the layer. And in here, I think AWS has it has its built-in uh, layers for you to use as well, but that's not what we're going to do. We're going to choose the custom ones that we just created. Uh, so the first one is Lambda, I mean uh, Pandas, and then we only have one version. Okay, so that is done. We have one layer here. And now let's add another one for the requests. And do the same thing here, except we're going to choose the requests layer. And we also only have one version here. Okay, so that is done. So we have both of the Lambda layers installed or imported in our Lambda function. And now I think we're ready to use them in our Lambda functions. So the first thing, first we're going to import pandas as pd and then import requests. And then let's use it for some simple things. Um, the first thing, let's say my data is equal to, uh, let's just do column one, it's a list, like one, two, and then 
column two, and now three, four, or something like that. And then we're going to define a data frame. Specify data equal to my data. And then we're going to print out something. It's called pandas data frame. And then we actually print it out. And then next, we're going to use the uh, request library to do some uh, basic requests. So we're going to do response equal to request. We're going to do a get. And I found a testing URL online that we can use for testing. It's just a static website. And then we can print out something like request response and then actually print out the uh, response as a text format. And then, yeah, just return this, why not? Um, let's deploy that. Okay, so the update is successful, and now let's test it. We don't need this. Hit save. And then hit test. Okay, so it seems like everything is successful. We got a response back. And then it creates the uh, panda data frame successfully. And then it gets the request successfully back as well and printed it out. So as you can see here, we did not explicitly include pandas or request in our Lambda function deployment packages. Um, but we are able to use them in our Lambda function. And even though the package is big in our Lambda layers, we are still able to do inline editing, which is very convenient because we can test our code uh, in real time. So this is it, everyone. I hope you have learned something. And if you like this video, I hope you can give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.